you need to be able to to talk to somebody because yeah. I. It did. It took the power away. It's so amazing when you say stuff out loud that that power of what's racing in here right. diminishes. It changes your thoughts. It's so yeah. crazy how Christ, a lot of Christians tend to feel like that's a bad thing. Well, hi, friends. Come on in here. Perfect timing because this is Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast where Joyce teaches the Word of God in her wonderful, practical, no-nonsense way. And my lovely friends and I, oh, that was such a flourish. (laughs) Thank you. We talk about the real stuff of living it, and we don't hold anything back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley and Jay, three friends who are all in very different stages of life, but we understand the value of having fabulous honest, loving women around you. And when we need a little extra help, we talk to Miss Joyce and she is on the spot anytime we need her. Because sometimes you just have to talk about life with your girlfriend. So come on in here, consider yourself one of us and let's talk it out together. Come Come on in. Come on in. (laughs) Do you realize we always, whenever G does like the intro, like we look at each other and we kind of smile. Yeah. (laughs) It's like a thing. I just our moments. We, 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 like, we kind of like flirt with each other a little bit. And we always look at each other. We do this. Sometimes I wink. <laughs> I don't know if she's I don't wink at you, one. though. I don't want to mess you up. We don't want, I think that's the biggest thing. We try not to look so, at you. Yeah. Oh, it never messes me up. <laughs> no, it's you. not that I never mess up. It's that I mess myself up. Ah. <laughs> More than external things. But, you know, that's what we're talking about today. <laughs> It's really a good thing. Yes. We're talking thing. about our thoughts today and how our mind can do crazy things to us. So crazy. So true. It's so true, it isn't is. it? Yes. If there's anything that trips us up the most, it is the way we think about mm-hmm. things. Yeah. So we're talking about what Joyce has been teaching us all for a long, long time. Battlefield of the Mind is her number one seller. And of course, it's because it's directly what God's Word is saying about replacing those crazy thoughts yeah. <laughs> with the Word of God. And I think there's a lot of how-to questions. So it's a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good concept. How do I make it work? I think there's a lot of, um, like, if I think this, I should do this instead things that I think will be fun for us to talk about, to yeah. keep it really practical for all of us. Yeah. Because when you talk about your feelings... It really comes from your thoughts, right? Yeah. A lot of times we think, well, this is this is how I feel, which is real and valid, mm-hmm. but we we can see God do something in that by changing the way we're thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Everything starts up here. It does. Everything. Like you don't even know that you're feeling anything until you think about that you're feeling something. So yeah. It uh-huh. all like when you think about that very fact that everything starts up here. Everything. Everything. Yeah. That's why, I, I mean, it makes sense that that's one of the, the things that really catapulted, you know, like the Joyce Meyer ministry, like the books. Mm-hmm. Like the thing that has helped me so much is even the the Battlefield of the Mind Bible. That is like, oh, yeah. b- because like the way that Joyce even breaks down almost every scripture and ties it into how we think and how we can think for the rest of the day after yeah. we read that, it's just, mm-hmm. it's helped me so, so much. So yeah. it's such a, a, a powerful topic because everything starts up here. I grew up with the battlefield of the mind being just like a, it was a big part of my parents' life. My dad, especially, he just, that changed his life. So I grew up hearing about it. And so I just thought, oh, that's that really cool book with that chess piece on the cover of it. And so not till a couple years ago did it click. And so, you know, when Joyce says- No, wait a minute. You worked here for a long time still a couple years ago. I was was actually really hoping you maybe didn't notice that that's what I said. (laughs) I was going to talk really fast. We could go that early. Just a couple years ago. Um, you just made the connection. Wait a minute. Yeah. She's the one that wrote the chess piece <laughs> book. What? Who knew? No, no. I knew when I started working here, she wrote it. I didn't I didn't fully understand the, like what that meant. Yeah. And so it was a couple years ago that the phrase that Joyce says, think about what you're thinking about. Mm-hmm. It, like I've heard her say that for a long time, but it clicked. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I can think about what I'm thinking about. And it was like it is a kind of a switch. mind blower, isn't yeah. it? It's one of, yeah, it's one of those things that it's just like, oh wait, I can think about what I'm thinking about. Yeah, like and, if you and just change it. it and actually change it. Yeah. yeah, and then it does. It affects. I mean, you can do that for every single part of your life. Like I can think about what I'm thinking about with my relationships as a parent, as an employee, as a like everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if there's there's anything that changes the outward things 
that you're dealing with more than changing the way you think about them. Yeah. The situation may be the same, mm-hmm. but if I start to change the way I'm thinking about it, mm-hmm. then it does seem like it physically changes. And sometimes it does because God works that way right? yes. because it's His Word. And, and I think that's really important. We're not just talking about happy thoughts. Yeah. We're not just talking about being positive, although those are great things. But when you add the Word of God into this... Yes. It adds a level that's just like a rocket going off. It just it changes so much. Yeah. It uh, totally changes the way you perceive it. Because there's a yeah. lot of things in our lives that, of course, we have no control over it. There's, right. There's certain... Too there, many. <laughs> you just have <laughs> so no that control. That be all of it. <laughs> and that's the thing that I've found myself thinking about a lot is like, oh, I wish I had control over it or I try to control the situation versus thinking about the fact that I'm yeah. thinking about that and saying, hey, I can't control it. I need to give it to the Lord and I can change the way I look at it. And yeah. I can just change the, like by using the word and using the authority that he's given me mm-hmm. to actually control right. and think on the things that I'm supposed to think on. Right. Um, it really can even just change your whole mood yeah. up, and your whole outlook on that specific like situation. Yeah, That's absolutely. True. Yeah. So let's jump right in and start by Joyce telling us how all of this begins, what battlefield of the mind means, and how we can change the way we think. Probably our mind gives us more trouble than anything. You know why that is? Because the mind is the battleground that Satan comes and attacks us on. Thus, the book that I wrote, The Battlefield of the mind. If you can win the battle in your mind, then you can win the battle for life. Where the mind goes, the man follows. So an obedient mind will lead to an obedient life. A disobedient mind will lead to a disobedient life. So if you made a decision last night or at any time in in your life, I want to not just be a Christian, I want to be an obedient Christian. I want to be a child of God who wants to do what's right and does what's right and glorifies God. I don't want to be mediocre and and compromising and just see what all I can get by with and hope I can still sneak in the back door of heaven. I want to love God with my whole heart and do it right. And I'm sure that most of you have made that decision. But a lot of times people make that decision, but it never happens for them Because although they made a good decision and they have a good desire, they never change their mind. They still think junk. They have stinking thinking. And anytime we have stinking thinking, we're going to have a stinking life. So, amen. Is that right? So the devil constantly attacks our thoughts. And But believe it or not, in the beginning, if you first start trying to cooperate with the Spirit of God to think right things, you are going to feel like you're in a battle from daylight till dark. And you just get so tired of fighting the enemy all day, you don't hardly know what to do. But I can tell you, if you stand your ground, it gets better and better and better and better and better. And, you know, although my mind still gets attacked, there's always things that the enemy is suggesting to my mind. But after all these years now in practice, I mean, I recognize them really quickly, and it's not that difficult at all to just say, nope, I'm not going there. I've been there. I've done that. I know what it produces, and I'm not going to think like that. So we're learning that it's a decision. Mm -hmm. What we think is a decision, and Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us have the opinion that thoughts just kind of fall into our head yeah, yeah. and we have to go with it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. what, what Joyce is saying, and most importantly, what God's Word is saying, is that that's not really how it has to work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What love, are, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, what, what are some times that you guys have had stinking thinking? But she's, before you answer that, tell me what you were going to say. She's going to ask you deep personal questions about your life oh. now. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I, I just wanted to point out something that Joyce said in yeah. that clip about like it's a decision to cooperate with the spirit of God. Man, like that to that me that good. was that was so powerful. Like I can make a choice to either stay in my little pit of despair mm-hmm. and you know spiraling thoughts or I can say, you know what, I'm going cuz the spirit of God of course is not going to he doesn't want us to mm-hmm. go down that path, go right. down that trail. Right. And just realizing that it's two paths we can choose. We can either choose to not cooperate mm-hmm. with the spirit of God or cooperate with I just I loved how she yeah. said that. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think that's great. It's really now important. to the deep personal questions. Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Stinking thinking. Ooh, so deep. Let's Stinkin go. Stinking thinking. I I think it's. I was thinking about this. And there are two places in my home where I do this the most. And I've realized it recently. In the shower, like I like I will spiral. I get a lot of really cre- creative ideas in the shower also, but like I do too. Right? You, you but you think like even what you're saying about uh, your your mind spiraling, it's because there's no interruptions. No, right? by yourself. Yes. Yeah. Quiet. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. It, it's something I don't there's something about that moment. Yeah. And so often I wish I've had like something to write stuff down on. Um I've wanted to invent this for the longest you time. Should. <laughs> yeah, some sort of shower writer for <laughs> yes. for those uh, look brilliant like, ideas. So sometimes I'll purposely pick a topic I know I need to spend some time thinking about and take it with me in there and so I can come out with some ideas. That's really helpful sometimes. Yeah. But also, like, if I'm in a negative headspace mm. or if I'm feeling anxious, then when I'm in there, it's like it just pours. And so a thought, I'll go in there. I'm worrying. sorry. That made me laugh because she's in the shower and, and it just and pours. pours. <laughs> I want to play Maybe on words. Maybe that's why it's so much more intense. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I'll go in thinking about whatever specific thing is on my mind. And before I know it, by the time I get to um, the end of the shower, it's I'm like way over here mm. on the path down this negative thought trail Right. when I just started with this one concern. So and what do you do about that when that happens? It's, well, this book has been so helpful because I realized I could stop that, that trick. So when I realize, like eventually I'll catch myself like, whoa, how did we get here? And sometimes yeah. I'll even say stop and just sort of take a breath because I need the physical act of stopping my thoughts. Mm. Um, That's a great suggestion. It is. It's really helpful. It's practical. And you sound silly, but you're so in your head anyway. It really doesn't yeah. matter. It's better than <laughs> thinking yes, the way you're thinking. Right. Got you. <laughs> right. Um, but stopping in its track, and then I just need to refocus on something else. Yeah. So I'll just pick a different topic to think about. But there and then the kitchen sink is my other go-to of thinking. It's water. It's water. Do you, I should do you stop have these that. thoughts at the pool? <laughs> no, I, no. Or the beach. I'm super great there. <laughs> There's no thoughts at all that happen there. But, yeah. oh, but one thing I wanted to, to share out of this book that I underlined, because when I, when I realized this, that I would do this in those spots, it's because I was worrying. And so I would take my worries, and because nothing else was happening there, I would just go. And so I read this in, in the book... It's on page 116. I'm not sure what chapter this is, but um, it's talking about a verse in 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7. And it says, Humble yourself um, under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he may exalt you, casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him, for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Mm -hmm. So then Joy says, This passage lets us know that to humble ourselves is not to worry. A person who worries still thinks that in some way he can solve his own problem. Worry is the mind racing around trying to find a solution to its situation. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's so A proud man is full of himself while the hard. humble man... It's so hard. Yeah. yeah. But the humble man is full of God. The proud man worries. The humble man waits. Wow. I don't want to wait. I would like to spend the five or ten minutes in the shower with a problem and coming out with a solution. But that's me... Figuring right. it out. Right. Mm-hmm. That's me racing. Yeah. It's not God humbling so before him. You know, while while Aaron's talking about that book, just to let you all know, of course, Joyce's book is, is fabulous. You should get it. We also have a, a free study that mm-hmm. you can get that will help you a lot that has a lot of this content. Um, so it's available at um, joycemeyer.org slash talk it out and you can find it it's called the battlefield of the mind online study so we, we just want you to know while we're talking about this that's yeah, there for you if so you need good. it it's so yeah. good yeah well i guess that, that's amazing like yeah the, the difference between acknowledging <laughs> humility versus pride <laughs> you yeah, know it it's all wrapped up in pride that's an ouchy way to go Woo! about it but it's so true yeah it is and me worrying is me thinking I can do something about it. Which is so funny. Like when you step back and say that, like, do I think that I'm actually going to be able to figure this out? No. Exactly. Uh, I can barely figure out what we're going to have for dinner tonight. I'm not going to solve this problem in five minutes in the shower. Yeah. 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 And so I guess with mine, my time when I have the worst, that I've found myself having the worst thinking, especially in this season, you Mm -hmm. know, um, of walking through what I've walked through and divorce and all that stuff um, has been in the morning. 
mm. right in the bed, right when I wake up. Right, right when you open your right eyes. Right when I open my eyes because it's the acknowledgement that things have truly changed in my life mm. from like, I don't wake up next to someone. Mm. I don't have my daughter at the house all the time. Like, it's just that, yeah. it, you that, whoa, I'm alone, you know, yeah. <laughs> where partially I'm like, yes. Then other parts is like, whoa, I'm yeah. alone. And so a lot of times I've noticed that I kind of can sometimes carry over what I was thinking about the other day mm-hmm. in the morning. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily dream a lot. Like my dreams are definitely if Scott wants to talk to me or tell me something. But for the most part, I sleep soundly Then I wake up and it's like I'll have like yeah, p- yeah. A palpitating heart. And I realized I'm thinking about, OK, mm-hmm. this is what happened. This is what did. This is this. This is this. Oh, I figured this out that I like that I tend to think about is. I wonder what today's going to be. Is it going to be better than mm. yesterday or, to, or worse than yesterday? Like, like dreading it before you started. Dreading it. Yeah. And like already thinking about conversations or emails that I might get and how will I respond, how I'll react, worrying about yeah. what could potentially come. Mm-hmm. And dread is so big for us. It is. It's it's <sighs> such a thing for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 it can be daunting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's one yeah. of those things where it's like you. I really don't. I can't control. I literally cannot control what right. happens that day. Now, sometimes though, Holy Spirit does give me like wisdom, discernment of like, okay, guard your heart in these areas. I can't take that little tip from the Holy Spirit to then start dreading over it. I have to right. take and be like, okay, something might come today that might ca- try to throw me off, but God's got me, you yeah. know? And so I can find myself spiraling down those thoughts or saying, okay, God, thank you for the heads up. Thank you for the warning that, you know, so I can just be prepared for whatever comes, yeah. you know? And mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm learning to do that. So that's one of the ways that I do it. I acknowledge, okay, th- is this from God mm. or the or the devil? <laughs> Number yeah, one, that's good. acknowledgement. Like, yeah. is this thought from God or the devil? And once I acknowledge that, then if it's from the Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Gratitude. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for whatever's to come. Because it, it's happened recently. Um, or... If it's from this of Satan, I literally quote one of my favorite scriptures in Philippians. I think it's four and eight. Like whatever things are beautiful, mm, lovely, yeah. and of good report. Think on these things. I'm like, is this beautiful? No, it's ugly. You know, yeah. is it of good report? No, that's a bad report. Like <laughs> yeah. I probably shouldn't be thinking about it. And yeah. so quoting that over me, and then really just pivoting my thoughts, like using that control that authority that we have mm-hmm. to say like, you know what, I don't have to think about this now. Like yeah. I'll put it on and some things I might write down and say, okay, we'll, we'll let that handle itself. But that's a little note, but I don't have to, to dread it. Yeah. That's yeah. such great advice. I think that's that really going to help a lot of people. I did that who are recently listening right too. Now. Like I was having a, some not great thoughts and I learned this in counseling, but the counselor said, just write them down and put them away. And the act of getting those thoughts out and then walking away from them hmm. made a huge difference because I was able to, I wrote them down and then I gave them to God. And so hmm. it was an act of me saying, I can't control these things. I've written down what is concerning me. Now take it, it's yours. And I cannot even explain like the freedom I felt after doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Just, Journaling is powerful. Yeah. Like yeah. That's, and, and sometimes like even through my healing with my ex, even like, I, I mean, and I don't suggest this to everyone, but sometimes... I would just send them, sometimes I'll send them a text saying, hey, I'm still hurt by this. Like, and sometimes I would just journal it, mm-hmm. you know, if, if, I, if I felt like my text was erratic, like crazy, <laughs> yeah, I probably need to journal this and not text them, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it was a fear no. <laughs> you know, like, but sometimes those thoughts are things that we shouldn't suppress and and just stuff it. Right. It's yeah. exactly like you brought up counseling and, and talking to someone, getting good friends around you, talking to a pastor, finding a, you know, a counselor, a therapist to get like no one's saying to suppress your thoughts right. and just pray. And, like I'm, I'm a big like advocate for not spiritually bypassing, like don't over spiritualize yeah, things agree. and 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 not not take care of yourself. If you need to talk mm-hmm. to someone Talk to yeah. someone, but don't let that be your first resort where whenever you feel something, then you want to go run and talk to somebody. That's when you know that that's out of order. The priority is yeah. talk to God first, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, talk to the Holy Spirit first and then use wisdom and talk to the people that you need. So counseling is good and journaling is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're not saying because you're a Christian, you shouldn't have bad thoughts. We're, no, we're not saying that. Not right. at all. We're all human. We are going to have all sorts of thoughts that can take us to 
terrible places. We're saying that God can help us change the direction of those thoughts. So um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll share my ugly thoughts too in just a minute. I don't want you to think I'm getting off the hook. Oh, we're because, not. Well, uh, you're not. We're uh, not don't you worry. You. I've got so many. <laughs> but um, right now we're going to see how Joyce learned to control those day-to-day thoughts that she was dealing with. And then we'll come back to talk about it. How many of you believe that, the, that there is an enemy, that you have an enemy that whispers things to your mind and to your soul that are lies from the pit of hell. They are not the truth, and if you believe them, you will be destroyed. I don't know about you, but I am so glad that I found this out because he had control in my mind for way too long. I was a born-again Christian, but nobody ever told me what I'm talking about here tonight. So I was born again, but my mind was full of junk all the time, and so therefore, I was mad all the time. I was upset all the time. I was jealous of people. I was greedy. I was selfish and self-centered, but I was saved. I, I would have gone to heaven. I believe that because I really trusted Christ for my salvation, but nobody ever told me that my mind made one bit of difference to the outcome in my life. And I'm asking you tonight to take an inventory of your thoughts What's been on your mind lately? If you're depressed, what have you been thinking about? If you're angry, what have you been thinking about? If you're bitter, what have you been thinking about? (laughs) We can have our mind renewed according to the Word of God. Let's take just a second and look at Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, fashioned after and adapted to its external customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind. Amen. So how are we changed? First, our mind has to change, and then our life changes. We don't think the way that we used to think, but we begin to actually believe this book and think like God thinks. My goodness, do you know how many problems people have because of the junky thoughts they think about themselves? I'll tell you what, you're looking at a woman, I would be petrified anymore to think bad, junky thoughts about myself because I know it so displeases and so dishonors God. He sent his only son to die for you. He loved you enough to pay an awful price for you. And who do you think you are to have bad, terrible, junky thoughts about yourself? If God loves you, then you can love you. Amen? I said, if God loves you, then you can love you. You don't think... You don't need to think I'm stupid. You think I have the mind of Christ. You don't need to think I can't do anything. You look at Romans 12 and you say, I'm gifted and talented. There's something that I can do and it's important to the people in the body of Christ that I fulfill my part. Quit letting the devil drag you down through wrong thoughts that don't agree with the Word of God. I have the mind of Christ. I'm gifted, I'm talented, I'm anointed. Learn how to talk like God talks. Learn how to see yourself the way He sees you, and your life will change radically. Ooh, that's good stuff. So good. good. Yeah. It is. It's so good. If God loves you, then you can love you. <gasps> I mean, there are so many people right now whose minds are being blown by this whole process mm-hmm. that if I can believe God's Word for someone else, I can believe it for me too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those things are big. It's true. And how many of our our day is and our our thoughts during the day is spent on if only I could do this like my friend here, or if only yeah, I look yeah. like this, then I could have this or all of that. And yeah, we'll we could still go to heaven, but man, are we missing out on all the things God has for yeah. us because we're too busy worrying about other people. Worrying yeah. about other people, comparing ourselves yeah. to other people, worrying about if we're good enough, worrying about if we're lovable, if we're this, if we're that. And honestly, like Joyce said, it's an insult, you know, yeah. to God and to the price that, that Jesus paid on the cross to, you know, mm-hmm. really like doubt. Like she should be petrified yeah. <laughs> to even yeah. think ne- negative thoughts about herself, man. I, I mean, and I have to war mm-hmm. with that. And me and my daughter talk about it all the time. And it's like... We cannot allow ourselves to think negatively about yeah. ourselves, no matter what phase we're in, no matter if you have a huge right. zit on your forehead or on your nose, no matter <laughs> if you ate a lot 
you know, mm-hmm, over the yeah. summer or during quarantine and you gain some weight or whether you look your best. Either way, it can't be based off of situations. It has to just be based on the fact that God loves me. Yeah. I need to love myself. There's always something wrong with Absolutely. every we one of us. We can always find something exactly. wrong. Exactly. It's not like it's hard to find a reason for anyone to think poorly about themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. But when you look at it that way that we're God's chosen creation. Mm-hmm. So we're not just talking about ourselves in a negative way. We're talking badly about who God made us to be. Right. His masterpiece. Yeah. yeah. And He doesn't want that for us, and we shouldn't want that for Him. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there, there's so much uh, in all of this. Yeah. I, I've had um, a really hard week. Like I've just, I don't know why things happen the way they do sometimes, but it's just been a really difficult week. And I, I think probably part of it is getting ready to talk about this, you know, um, not that God does that to us, but that Satan will throw things in our path. And instead of going a negative way, you know, I've had to think about this a lot yeah. and to say, okay, what am I going to do instead of dwelling on these hard things that are happening right now? Um, so real practical, like you said, Erin, just mm-hmm. say stop and do something different. One of the things for some of the things that I've been dealing with this week is I am not going to go to Google Mm. and look up a lot of stuff. Yep. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that can take you down a really dark path really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So make some good practical decisions mm-hmm. to what you let into your mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that makes a big difference. Yeah, what are huge. we dwelling on? Am, am I looking up everything that could possibly go wrong? Or am I reading God's word and trusting what he says Mm -hmm. that he is there, that he will never leave me, he will never forsake me, even when I don't see an outcome, Mm -hmm. even when I'm fearful Mm -hmm. that it's not him that puts fear in me, you know, combating all of that. So, you know, one of the things for me is Psalm 139, so beautiful. I love it so much. And it's, I, when I start to have those thoughts, one of the first things I'll say is God search me, you know, Mm -hmm. me, check my anxious thoughts and lead me, you know, help me to think the right way. And that, that always helps me a lot because I know it's, it's not even just I have to change my thoughts. If I ask God to help me, He will yeah. Yeah. help all walk me will. through yeah. it. So that that's one of the ones that, that's really been helping me. And yeah, that's good. Just through, through some of these hard things um, that are happening you know, outside of myself, there are always hard things that are happening inside of yourself at the same time. Yeah. So you can, you can have those thoughts like... Um, you know, rather than I'm rejected, right? We all have those thoughts like, you ever feel like you're just not loved well enough mm-hmm. or, you know, you just feel on the outside of whatever to go back to God, you think of me so many times every day that it outnumbers the grains of mm-hmm. sand and the number of stars in the sky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when I have those things that that I'm not thinking well, then I I go back and I remember that God has put the fruit of the Spirit in me, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, Mm -hmm. gentleness, self-control, but I don't feel like I have any of those things. I can start, instead of thinking about, oh, obviously I have no self-control because I just did this, I can begin confessing Mm -hmm. God promises because the Spirit lives in me that I have these things yeah. and God help me to walk in them. Yeah. So it's so practical. It is. I mean, there are so many things that you can write down. Mm-hmm. This is not an ethereal kind of thing. Mm-hmm. This is daily hitting the road and doing it kind of stuff. I didn't realize that until a couple of years ago when I started dealing with anxiety, which I've shared before I've never dealt yeah. with. And so that's what, what drew me to reading Battlefield of the Mind again because I I needed something and I I needed some direction. Like I knew I knew the the word of God would be my source, but I just it was it was too much. So I needed some like specific direction of here's how to do this. Yeah. And so reading that book with those practical steps, um, a couple of times I've had like panic attacks and it's usually during the night. I was with Ginger one time we were traveling on a trip and I I texted her the next morning and said, I, I, I'm going to be late because I just had a panic attack last night. I just need a minute. Um, and it's like, I mean, I'm, I'm, our friends are going to understand this. If you had it, like a shaking, I couldn't, my mind was racing, my heart mm-hmm. was racing. And so all I could mm-hmm. do was quote scripture. I remember, and I called, I went to the bathroom, it was in the middle of the night, 
because um, I had a roommate, so I held it up in the bathroom and I was sobbing. And I said, Mike, I can't, I can't stop shaking. I can't stop like what's happening. And so he prayed for me. And then I turned on worship music and my headphones and I just like took deep breaths. And I just had to, I had to keep thinking the thoughts of God. I had to keep remembering that I have the mind of Christ and yeah. that this is, this will pass. But, um, you know, the verse in Psalms, it's, um, you give me, I will lay down to I can't telling you all these things, and I can't remember the verses. Psalm four eight: In peace, I will lay down to sleep for you, O Lord. Keep me safe. Yeah. And so, I should be able to remember that. I've said it so many times, but just over and over again to replace that negative thought that's coming in. That's me saying no. Right. This is the thought I'm going to think on. So, you know what I love about what you're sharing? You're doing it right now, and you did it then. That morning, you called me and you let me know, and you told me, and I could pray about it. Mm -hmm. I could understand a little bit. You know, when you keep something secret, mm -hmm. when you hide it, mm -hmm. then it gives it so much more power. That's so true. And Aaron took the power away from it mm -hmm. by saying, there's nothing, there's no shame in this. This is what I'm dealing with. I just want you to know, will you pray for me? Yeah. And by telling everyone else mm -hmm. that there's no shame in anything that they're dealing with, and I... I just think that's beautiful that you did that. I appreciate you saying that because on the flip side, I thought, I do not want to tell my boss that I'm going to be late to this meeting because I can't get my act together. And I thought, no, this is where I am in this moment. Ginger knows me. She she knows I'm, I'm doing my best, but I need to be honest and I need to let my friend in. And it made it made a huge difference. Even calling Mike at two in the morning, I thought, I don't want to bother him. He's got the kids. I don't want to wake him up. But in that moment, I needed to tell somebody else I'm not okay, yeah. and I need you to help me through this. Just like you were saying, I, you need to be able to to talk to somebody because yeah. I it did. It took the power away. It's so amazing when you say stuff out loud that that power of what's racing in here right diminishes, changes your thoughts. It's so yeah. crazy how Christ, a lot of Christians tend to feel like that's a bad thing. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. to acknowledge that you have a moment of weakness. I wanted to share something else with you guys. Um, <clears throat> this past Easter was a was big for me. And not because of any amazing production or any magical or, you know, Holy Spirit filled worship session. It was mm -hmm. because after Good Friday and I, I've shared a lot about, you know, what's going on in my personal life as it, as it pertains to infidelity and divorce, getting, you know, getting served papers and now being, you know, figuring out life by myself. And That's I've shared, a hard stuff. It's a lot of hard stuff through a, a, a pandemic yeah. <laughs> as well. Oh. And so yeah. anyways, I'm saying that because yeah. this past, I was thinking right the day before Good, um, Good Friday, um, it was just a hard, hard day for me. I was just thinking about a whole bunch of stuff, got several emails, more things about the situation came out. Like it's, it's unfortunate when just layers and layers of things that come out. And finally, I just really started reading about the cross and Jesus, you know, dying mm -hmm. on the cross. And then I read the part in the scripture where it was talking about how they, like the people were casting lots for mm -hmm. Jesus's clothes, like, you know, and then Jesus says, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I'm like, hold up. They did know what they were doing. They were literally casting lots. Like, no, <laughs> and you, like uh -huh. while you were dying, they should have known like, better. They gave you vinegar when you needed water. Like yeah. they knew. And he's like, yeah, they knew. But they didn't know that they were a part of the big plan. So I immediately mm. then was like, man, well, thank you to those people. And so what that did was help me. And hopefully this helps you, even with the way that you think about a horrible situation. I began to thank my ex. Wow. Hmm. I called him by his name. Thank you. And I began to thank the mistress. <laughs> I said her name out loud. Like I began to thank them and I felt a release where mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't have to find out any more stuff. I don't have to know anything else, but thank you because they're a part of a big plan that I have never even seen before. I haven't even seen it, but what they've wow. done has, what I thought was detriment, what I thought was detriment is actually catapulting me to whatever's coming next. So thank Yay, you. That's that is big. huge. I think when you start recognizing the fact that you can think about what you're thinking about, it's, it's harder in the beginning to learn to to change the way you think. So like you said, Ginger, this, the circumstance is still the same, but I can think about it differently. It is, it's harder in the beginning, but once you practice and once you begin to see God working and you see this, yeah. whatever that was, you see God take that story for and turn it into something amazing, then it makes mm -hmm. the process even easier. What we're talking about works. Yeah. yeah. 
And so that that changes things and slowly it it becomes second nature mm-hmm. instead of um you know in the beginning it's like oh wait a minute yeah I I need to do this and uh-huh. that's good that's a great place to yeah, start absolutely. but there will come a time where it's second nature that this is what I need to think instead of what I'm thinking. It's mm-hmm. almost always the opposite, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a scripture in the Bible that is the opposite of what you're thinking. <laughs> yep. If you're thinking you're worthless, God tells you you are valuable. Mm-hmm. If you are afraid, God tells you He is there with you. You don't have to be afraid. Yeah. Uh, just about everything yeah. that um, we're dealing with, God has an answer for. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go right back to Joyce one more time because you've taken this inventory in your life now that she was was talking about, and uh, she's going to give you some more really great practical ideas. You can do your own thinking, and so can I. You can think your own thoughts. You don't have to think anything that falls in your head. You can throw some out and choose some better ones. You can do your own thinking. 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 If you have to, you write down 20 things that you want to think that you believe will improve your life. Make it all something that comes from the Word of God. And you get up in the morning and you, you say, God lives in me. I have His wisdom. I am forgiven, made right with God through the blood of Christ. I have worth and value. God loves me unconditionally. And then when you start feeling junky at 9 o'clock, you get your list back out. When you start feeling bad at 11 o'clock, you get your list back out. When you make a little mistake and you lose your temper and yell at your kids and the devil says, see, you ain't even saved, you get your list back out. (laughs) Are you there? Fight the good fight of faith. And the next day it'll be easier, and the next day it'll be easier, and a month from now it'll be a lot easier, and a year from now you won't even be having that battle with those thoughts. You may have a battle with some new thoughts, but you learn how to win the battle by fighting with the Word of God. Amen? Don't overload your mind. God created us to handle life one day at a time. So don't be worrying about tomorrow and don't be worrying about yesterday. Don't look to the right or the left. Don't look behind you. (laughs) Don't look in front of you. Live today because God has given you the grace that you need to have a great day today if you'll focus on this day. Come on, give God a praise. This is the best stuff. I'm telling you, this, this is so practical. God's Word always is, but sometimes we read it and we kind of brush over it and we don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. This is what God wants us to do with His Word. He wants us to live in peace and joy and um, security, no matter what's going on around Mm -hmm. us, because the world is not secure. (laughs) There's a lot of stuff happening, but this changes it. This, This changes everything. I love that she said too. Like if it, at eleven o'clock you need to pull that list out again, and then at three yeah, o'clock, yeah, however pull your many list out. times and it you takes, just, you, you, we just have to keep doing it because sometimes it doesn't feel like it's working, and sometimes it feels like I've got my lists and my scriptures, and it's not changing anything. But we have to just keep going back to it because His Word is faithful. God is faithful in the things that He promises us. Yeah, and the devil wants us to give up and say eh, it didn't work that time, so I'm just going to do it on my own and let my mind race. But yeah, He's faithful to what He's promised us. Yeah, I love how she says, "Just get through today." Yeah, one day at a time. Yeah. One day and get that through is now. So great, get through now. That's like, that's what got to me. That's why yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, <That's> so good. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what I needed. I'm gonna give you this, and this is this is what we're gonna say at the end of the show, and it's all yours. Okay. <laughs> The, this part right here. Yeah, the blue things at the okay. bottom. Okay, so the resource offer, Battlefield of the Mind, <laughs> comes from Joyce's top-selling book, Battlefield of the Mind. Make sure you guys get that. It's a that. free Bible it's a, study. It's a free Bible study. You're going to love it. You're going to enjoy it. Um, go to JoyceMeyer.org slash talk it out for the resource. Get caught up on all of our previous episodes <laughs> and sign up to be one of our friends because clearly we're great friends because she just passed me this and I just took it because I see that she needed it. So we love you. You did great. Thank did you for I being yeah, there really for me, friend. I can read. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it as good as Ginger because Ginger usually has it down here.
here and she does like this, but I didn't want to over. Thank it. Get it? Nice. That's <laughs> nice. I see what you did there. That was nice. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you, Ginger. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, all of our friends. See you next time on Talk It Out. Bye, you guys. Bye, friends. <laughs>